What's that? Jim Cluster and Johnny four seven two seven. Good morning. My name is Phil, and welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good cooking is the jingle, maybe. I don't know. Do I like the jingle? Do you like the jingle? Today, I'm gonna teach you how to make a smoked pork butt. There it is. It's early. It's it's like nine in the morning. I haven't had breakfast, but if you want to eat smoked meat for dinner, you got you got to start a long time before. I have used my Komodo a few times on the show. Komodo is the style of grill. It is, uh, I believe, Japanese in origin, and it basically means that it's like an egg-shaped grill. And like they're typically like the nicer ones are made out of ceramic. Mine's made out of steel. But I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how I actually set this up. Because every other time I've just been like, just, just cook it on the grill. So, there's the egg. What do we got in here? One of the nice things about the Komodo is that it's very fuel efficient. So, if you cook, use it, a lot of times you won't actually use all the charcoal in it. So, I, I still have some charcoal in here. So, I'll lift up the grate to show you. My boss suggested this particular lump charcoal, and I think it's hilarious because they give you like three size pieces of charcoal. The idea of having larger lump charcoal is that it creates more airflow which lets the fire heat faster lets you smoke things with more airflow airflow is good airflow I'm gonna add some more and I'm gonna add some wood chips for flavor since I already I have like a layer of coal already I'll probably start with the wood chips uh, they're actually not wood chips they're chunks you can soak these if you want I'm using pecan wood today because it's what I've got sitting out I think pecan wood is like a nice flavor nice woody smoke but it's not like super strong if you use mesquite your food is just gonna taste like mesquite wood which is a nice flavor so I don't you don't need a ton of these I'm just gonna throw in a few kind of like that and then I'll add some more coal I had to relatively fill up the grill because we're gonna smoke this for like eight hours nine hours and just as an example <laughs> it's like that's a piece of charcoal we don't need to put that big of one in I am gonna use my smoker stone which is a displacement tool so that sits on this right here these guys so I can't build up the coal any higher than that but you don't really want to anyways so you can see my my strategy of coal built placement they have this giant piece in the middle and kind of a ring of coal around it that way they like it, it helps maintain the circular airflow of goodness we want circulation I don't know I, I kind of made that up that's probably not even a thing here's a fire starter these are called tumbleweeds uh, I'm not exactly sure what they're made out of some kind of wood product I'm sure but we're gonna light that open our chute down to the bottom all the way so we can get airflow going and if you want things to heat up faster you can do two of these but you know we got all day not really in a rush and it will take a little while to get going especially because of that giant piece of wood in the middle so you actually may want to do two starters I might as well I'm gonna do two starters all right so next we will add our displacer and now that we have the fire at this level like with these starters going pretty hard we're not gonna need to with this stuff at all so that's good my uh smoker stone is dirty but that's okay i mean it looks it looks crusty and shit but that's just the ghost of meat past so i'm just gonna put it on the fire will sterilize things if you're worried about that so you see with that plate being there it's made of stone it forces the smoke up and around and because of the shape it's like you've got wind coming through but it's also like blanketing the meat in nice tasty smoke that's the motion of the smoke we get our grate back on and we need it to heat up so i do not want it to heat up too fast because we are doing this at a low temperature and these things are so heat efficient that once you get it like hot it's going to want to keep getting hot so if you were like a short huge fire i gotta cook me fast then you would open your your grates all the way and that would be good but yeah we'll do it a little bit more slowly we're gonna shoot for the the 225 to 250 range but you can see already it's starting to smoke up pretty nicely so we will let that heat up and while that's heating up we will prepare the butt okay so grills heating up smokers heating up whatever you want to call it I'm gonna make an extremely simple rub starting with a bunch of kosher salt it's like several tablespoons and an equal, equal-ish amount of ground black pepper. 
Uh, to this we will add some paprika, and that paprika will hopefully give us some reddish color as it smokes, which is just nice to look at. And then we can add a little bit of garlic and onion, but not too much because it can actually like burn. <laughs> it's, it's not really what you want. Yeah, so there's our extremely simple rub. It's basically, this is like seasoning salt. If you've ever had that, like on french fries or whatever, this is uh, the same ingredients. Could just use Lowry's or whatever the f it is. All right, here's our pork butt. It is seven and a half pounds. I paid seven bucks for it, which I, I don't know. I just think that's hilarious. All right, so we need to rub the heck out of this. Some people will like put a coating of mustard to make seasoning stick better. But I don't think that's necessary because it's already a wet butt. In this case, the soggy bottom is okay. Take that, Mary Berry. All right, and you can make sure you actually rub it in. Otherwise, it won't really stick. It'll just like slide right off. There's like a loose piece of pork right there. That's probably from processing. You can trim that if you want, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna not. Just gotta get up in there. And there's so many butt jokes to be made. Just so many. Here's the fat side. It's got a fattier layer. We will put that up right side up when we're uh, smoking it. So this is bone in. There's bones in the butt. It's not actually from the butt of a pig. It's not. It's the shoulder, but they call it a butt. I think actually on the package for this, it said that it's like a shoulder butt, which that's like a amusing mental image. A few shoulders had butts. Think about it. All right, so that's ready to go. The grill is not ready to go. You can put that in the fridge if you have room in your fridge. I don't, but it's not gonna take that long for it to get up the temp. So we'll be back in a moment. Several moments. All right, we're at about 225, which is ideal. Uh, it might get a little hotter, but. We're holding steady because the grates are all the way closed, pretty much. This was a sl tiny sliver to let airflow continue. So, I just gotta get a pork butt on there. And there's not really a good way to do this other than just grabbing it. I'm trying not to compromise the rub too much, but we'll do what we must. I uh, just realized I should have put a drip pan under that. That's why the smoker stone's so dirty. It's because I forget sometimes. But it's on now, it's too late. I'll clean that smoker stone eventually. So, temperature drop just a little bit. It'll build back up in a short time. And it's gonna take roughly eight hours, maybe nine hours, maybe seven. As long as the temperature holds steady in that 200, 250 range, uh, we'll be good. I'm gonna check on it periodically, but I'm gonna leave it the f alone for the next couple hours. I might, uh, I might take it, uh, take it out from time to time, or open it and give it like a, a vinegar spray. That can help the outside from keeping the burn. You just give it a little vinegar. We'll update you in a, in a little while. So smoke meat every day. It's been almost two hours since we put our pork in the smoker, so we're gonna check on it. And this awesome grill. That like the exact temperature I left it at. And there you can see we're smoking along. Not a whole lot of smoke happening, but it is it is still on, so that's good. We will spray it with some <laughs> vinegar. I'm not using a water pan because the uh, these can hold moisture so well that the moisture from the meat will keep itself moist. Don't need to add any more. Probably the last update until we're closer to being done. So I'll see you in like five or six hours. Enjoy your day doing anything but standing over a grill because you can do other things. Bye. <laughs> Okay, so many, many things. It is now, what time is it? It's a little after six. So the pork was on for like eight hours and roughly at hour seven, I wrapped the pork and I killed the grill, but it's still hot. And I just want to show you where we're at. Like the, the reason we didn't film it is because John wasn't here at the time, but like there's not really a whole lot to do. So you don't really need to see every piece of this. So the, the idea is that at a certain point, like you've smoked it enough and you need to insulate it so it can continue to cook inside. And by wrapping it, you actually are cooking it in its own fat. And it looks incredible. Like there's literally just a pool of pork juice below, which I'll, we'll do the great reveal after I get off the grill. All right, and the grill's already cooling down, so no problem there. Let's get this, this puppy inside. Here's the big reveal. It's pork. And there is just a insane amount of pork fat below this. So you need to get the foil out. I recommend pulling it out. Ba -ba -ba -ba, ba -ba 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 -ba. Pork juice. You want to retain that juice because it'll help you 
pork be moist? Everyone loves the word moist. The nice pork butt test is to pull the bone out, which I already know we can do because it's already it's like sticking out. So just doing that, that's the oh yeah baby moment. And then you can take some forks and you can shred. It should be easy to do. It is easy to do. So we have successfully made a pork butt. It's good to break up the skin across different areas so you can get a little bit of that extra flavor. Up to you how much you want to shred it, but this looks awesome to me. Also up to you if you want to shred the whole thing at once. Unlike brisket and other meats, it's really not that big a deal if you shred it all at once because this stuff, it holds up pretty well. Let's try a piece of pork. That's really good. And time. I'm gonna show you some things you can do with this pork. Take some of your pork, or all your pork if you wanna, wanna do it this way. You can dress the pork right away while it's still hot with barbecue sauce. And I just happened to have some East North Carolina style vinegar sauce that I made. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna teach you how to make that but probably not. And you can just dress it right away. And while it's in this form, it's awesome. So that's one option. You can dress your pork. Now it tastes like vinegar. Or you can toss it with a more conventional sauce, such as Jimbo's. Make a sandwich with some coleslaw. Let me show you that. So, work. Actually, I think I'm gonna use probably vinegar. I want some of that, that fatty stuff. That's the best tasting part, just so you know. Get some slaw on that. Oh yeah, baby. You could probably toast your buns if you care, but most barbecues don't, so they don't care. Look at that sandwich. What's the payoff moment, actually getting to eat a sandwich? Oh man. You know, I really taste the smoke from the wood. That's the point of smoking meat. It's very nice, really well complicated by that nice, simple vinegar-based slaw. This couldn't be easier. Uh, it's almost like cooking on a crock pot, except you gotta, you gotta make sure that the fire is not messed up. When my my fire got too hot, it went out at one point, and I still made a nice pork. So you can do this if you have the right equipment. You don't need any talent or skill, like most PGC recipes. But that's how you do it. Don't be afraid of the pork. That's how you do it. I'm Kevin. <laughs>